How can you support the C2K report? Honestly, we're not looking for handouts. We are assembling a team of free thinkers that are called to fund everything Ecclesia. When you join Project 144, you become a lifetime seat holder at the big Ecclesia ministry table, enabling you to collaborate with other Project 144 members to fund projects everywhere. For more information on the power of Project 144, visit our homepage at c2kreport.com and click the Project 144 logo. That's c2kreport.com and click the Project 144 logo. See you there. Welcome American Levitical Kingdom Privateers. This is the C2K Report and I am your host Rick Hidalgo. And with me tonight, surprise, surprise, it's Randy Conway. Randy, welcome. Hey, Rick. Glad to be with you again tonight. We were we were together last night, weren't we? <laughs> we were, and by now, by now, people have begun to w- watch that show, and I, I'm wondering what the reaction is. Oh, you've already got it posted, huh? By by now, by the time they see this. How about that? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> a very special report we did, uh, and we're still kind of riding. Uh, uh, Riding uh, the high from that, haven't had a lot of sleep, and here we are again. Uh, <laughs> glad to be with you again, absolutely. Yeah, very glad. Um, and, you know, tonight is no different in that we're going to start tonight by reminding everybody about a couple things. First of all, uh, th- at the end of the month, the 29th and 30th, we've got a conference in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, if, if, if you believe... In in uh, monetary providence, okay, I can tell you we had something weird happen to where the uh, the early bird special is no longer. It's just permanently ninety nine dollars, <laughs> ninety nine dollars. Okay, Check them out. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and I don't know if that was human error or 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 the uh, the gremlins in the thing in the computer, but technically we could not change the amount, uh, in the, uh, PayPal setup, uh, for, uh, from $99 to 139. So we thought, so be it. Yeah. So be it. It's going to be $99 from now till the time <clears throat> you get to the door. And by the way, uh, on a serious note, uh, we, we want to make this announcement. Randy, are, th- are there still some scholarships available? There are some scholarships available, yes. <clears throat> okay. So I, I want to let you guys know, if you really want to come to the C2K uh, Report Conference, which I, I don't know why you wouldn't want to come, just to see Randy. I mean, that's that's one thing, okay? <laughs> But you, you, if if you really do want to come and you're having a real tough time financially, and we can all understand that because Babylon is Babylon, and they 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 do what they do. But um, if you're having a hard time, please do contact us at info at c2kreport.com and let us know <clears throat> that you want to come. Uh, we do have a couple scholarships available. Let us know. Uh, and you know you could be a recipient of those scholarships. So uh, very important because because we, you know the 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 donations that have been made towards those scholarships, uh, you know they were they were done out of out of appreciation and love for the C2K report and the information that we bring forward. And so we want to extend that to to some of you. I, I gotta say something about that. Yeah, please do. That, that, those donations for those scholarships. This is going to blow people's minds because all of all the naysayers, all the doubters, won't this paint a target on my back? All this self-governing talk and all this authentication talk. This is actually a chief of police. I'm not going to say who or where because that wouldn't be fair to him. Yes. But it is actually a chief of police who understands how important this is. Uh, for people to learn to self-govern, to become authenticated, to live the way we're intended to live, become part of the ecclesia so that we can actually uh, raise that ecclesia up to do what it was intended to do from the beginning. I think we're going to talk about that tonight. Ooh, are so, we going to talk? Yeah. 
So for all you naysayers, this is a chief police that says all of God's people need to do this, and he made the donation for the scholarships. And, uh, I mean, if that doesn't just, you know, float your boat, I don't know what does. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, that's that that's good stuff right there. So so uh, please contact us if you if you need some help. You know, as far as you know, obtaining a ticket because we've got we've got that we've got that covered for um, a, a few people. So, with with that said, um, I want to remind everybody that uh, the reason why this conference is so important to uh, to anybody who decides to come, <clears throat> we are literally going to go from A to Z on self governing. You're not going to walk out of there. Uh, with any kind of knowledge gap. You're going to walk out of there knowing everything from A to Z. If we know it, you're going to know it by the time that you leave. And if and if, if, if for some reason we happen not to cover it on Saturday, we've got this crazy panel that we set up where you can ask us anything, including what flavor ice cream is your favorite. So you can, <laughs> it doesn't matter what the question is, we are going to answer it. Right. Right. We, we, we took care in how the, the schedule was established uh, and uh, so that people have time to go from one speaker to the next and, and rest their mind and, and rest their, their backside long enough so they can come in and <laughs> absorb the, the, the next speaker. And you're right. It's going to go from uh, philosophical, uh, you know, looking at self-governing to practical application to real life experience. Yeah, A to Z. It's mm -hmm. And let me tell you this too, okay? This is a secret, so don't tell anybody. Okay, this is only for the C2K audience. If you listen to this show, you're going to hear this. Okay, otherwise otherwise nobody's supposed to know. I'm going to be at the Holiday Inn Express. And I know other people that are going to be at the uh what's the hotel what's the other the mansion uh, yeah, the the uh, mount, mansion at Elfend F Elfendale Elfendale I don't remember. The As mansion. Some Lord of the Rings mansion. Yeah. Okay. Right. So so if, if if both places we got people staying at, okay, I got a feeling that if you want to have a really nice afterglow on you know on Saturday night after all of the speaking goes on and everything, if you're at one of those places there's a good chance that we could have a really great afterglow. I'm just saying it's just 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 an idea. Just <clears throat> don't tell anybody. <laughs> well, I'm glad you kept that in the private where nobody would ever hear that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> so <clears throat> so there's that, okay? Uh, and I'm looking forward, by the way, as I know Randy is, to meeting all of you, <clears throat> so many of you guys, that um, are so excited about this conference, and I'm really looking forward to meeting you. Yeah, isn't it exciting too, Rick? You know, we've had people that have really aren't even in a financial position to come that have bought tickets and and literally, literally said, "We are stepping out on faith that God is going to provide a way for us to get there and provide for us to stay there." But we're coming. We're coming on faith. Uh, I know they sent you some uh, some small gifts and and myself, and it's like. I think they they were literally trusting God when they did that to say we're we're giving to this organization, uh, and we're really not an organization. We're just two guys who try to tell tell you what God has laid on our hearts to to say. Um, but uh, yeah, people literally stepping out on faith just so they can be here to hear this uh, uh, teaching on self governance and what that means today and what that means to the kingdom of God. Yeah, so very exciting, very exciting. I don't want to overkill the conference, but it is just a couple weeks away, which is amazing to me uh, that we're already at a place where it's two weeks away. That's right. That's nuts. <clears throat> but uh, that's where we're at. Other thing well, I wanted, other thing that we we wanted to cover. Uh, our newest class is underway. We're two sessions in. Biggest class yet. Wow. What a class! And they are asking uh, amazing questions, and we're 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 staying on for. Uh, actually, the class have been taking less time than the questions. Uh, that's 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 just the kind of deep thinkers that we're 
that we've got in this class. So if you haven't taken the class yet, and trust me, you're going to want to because there are things coming where the class is necessary. It's, it's a necessary part of, of the journey of this ecclesia that we're raising up, okay? Um, <clears throat> so if you haven't taken the class yet, you need to contact me at info at c2kreport.com and get, get, get into one of the classes. The next one is November the 7th. November the 7th through November the 28th. It's on Monday nights at 7 o'clock Central Time, okay? Monday nights, 7 o'clock Central Time. And usually the discuss the um, the actual uh, you know uh, session talk uh, goes for an hour an hour and a half and then the the rest of the time is, is questions. So <clears throat> so that's that's to let you know about that. You got anything to add on that, Randy? No, um, uh, that's our, our two major announcements every week because they they are the only thing that's really. Uh, important to announce. We've got lots of stuff going on and where you're going to be, where I'm going to mm -hmm. be and all this. But we want to encourage people to come to the conference and we want to encourage people to, to attend the class because I don't know, Rick, I don't know anywhere else where you're going to find free classes that go sure. to the depth that the classes uh, that we're offering go to. Um, it just, uh, it's just, we could charge a lot of money for those classes and help support uh, the C2K report. They are absolutely free. Absolutely free. <clears throat> the only thing that costs is to join shopyourfarm.com and that's 12 bucks a year. Not 12 bucks a month, not 12 bucks a day, not 12 bucks uh you know bi-weekly. 12 bucks a month. No, a year. Excuse a me. Year. A year. A okay. dollar a month. A dollar a month. That is, and that's that. That's amazing. But that's something that the uh, founder of uh, Shopee Farm wanted to do. It's a ministry to him, and that's that's how he wants to do it. So, uh, God bless him. Want to uh, let people know that we are going to be on <clears throat> Jar of Mana Bible Podcast with Alfred Martinez on the uh, on the nineteenth of this month, nineteenth of October. Uh, that that's exciting. We're looking forward to being with Alfred on that. Uh, I know Alfred is a class attendee. He's attended the class and he's extremely excited about everything that we're talking about in the C2K report. And uh, look, we look forward to having having that had, having that discussion with Alfred. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and I'm glad you reminded me of that. <laughs> right. <laughs> <clears throat> And uh, so, um, so just that's just to kind of let you know, you know, that there are people contacting us now, wanting us to come and uh, you know have conversations with them on their on their podcast. If you happen to be somebody who has a podcast, uh, whether your podcast is one person or one thousand persons or one million, doesn't matter, um, unless your name is like. Dr. Fauci or something. I wouldn't want to be on his podcast, but the, you know, if, if you're on, if you're anybody else, uh, including, uh, including, uh, you know, Mr. Uh, <clears throat> Klaus Schwab, Klaus Schwab, you want us to come on. We can, we can help you with some of your problems. Right. Yeah. Yeah, since, since, since we're kind of having a little conversation about what we're doing here at C2K and, and everything we're doing is like Rick's tagline at the end of every show, it's all about the blood. Otherwise, it, it, it's just an exercise in futility. It's a sounding gong. Don't come to the conference. Don't sign up for the class. Don't listen to the, any other podcast we're on because it's it's. But we are we are literally trying to fulfill the mandate that that God has given His people, the commission that has get He's given to us. It is all about the blood, and and we're trying to teach people how to live live free. Uh, since we're we're talking about those places we're going to be this we're not actually going to be speaking but if you're going to be at the uh, Awaken America tour in Branson with Clay Clark come by and look at the book tables because you're going to find the C2K report there you're going to find Randy Conway poems there I'm I'm going to be there with uh uh a dear friend Casper McLeod and uh nice. I actually I'm not a speaker but I have a book table at that event Wow, that's cool. 
That's really cool. And that's like the first weekend in November, like the, the 4th and 5th, I think, something like that. Nice. In uh, Brantford, Missouri. So if uh, you decide to reawaken Babylon, I mean, America, you go over there and check out the book tables. Yep, come by, and, and I'm going to have some handouts for the C2K report there and some information on how you can get set free. And uh, Awesome. Um, or just come shake Randy's hand. I mean, that'd be cool, too. There you go. There you go. And, and, yeah, you know, I ain't scared. You can shake my hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, you know, um, Randy, I'm actually kind of glad you, you said what you said because it's going to lead us into our conversation tonight because tonight we're titling this podcast The Great Restorer. <laughs> we're kind of on this roll right now with the great. We've talked about the great treasurer, the great general. You know, there was another one before that. I think it was a great contractor. You know, um, tonight is The Great Restorer. And why, why would the C2K report, of all places, talk about restoration? Why would we talk about restoration? I mean, is restoration part of the Clash of Two Kingdoms, Randy? Restoration is the Clash of Two Kingdoms. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's the whole battle, isn't it? Is for restoration. But, yes, absolutely. I mean, we're not, absolutely. Fighting, we're not fighting in order to try to see how many holes we can put in Satan. I mean, although it would be fun to find out how many holes. It's kind of like that old commercial with the owl and the lollipop, and you say, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? You know, tootsie pop. <laughs> right. right? You know, it'd be, it'd be really cool to see how many holes can you put in Satan. I, I, I'm, I'm all for that, okay? He needs to have lots of holes in him. But that's, but that's really not the point of this clash. We are not... We are not uh, uh, trying to establish a, a world's a Guinness Book of World world's re, world records on how many holes can you put in Satan. What we right. are trying to do is restore and reconcile this world in this this world's kingdom to the kingdom of God. Hi, we're Bill and Sandy Lampa. We welcome the process of authentication, and we designed these T-shirts. Come out of Babylon to help us spread the word of the Ecclesia. And we sent the talk to people and we give them the information on uh, the C2K report and we send them, uh, tell them to watch the videos and to try to attend the classes. We're vendors on Shop Your Farm and under Lample Ministries, you can check out our, the sizes we have and the prices. When we're talking about uh, the C2K report with people, we tell them, check out the first video of zero zero one uh, we will we'll stop at uh, we wear them out most often when we when we wherever we leave and um, people will stop us and we'll talk for a couple hours sometimes um, they work so well that even at home if I'm cooking a meal and I need to send him up to the store that sometimes I, I just say don't don't wear your shirt because he's gone out before and not come back for two hours and messed up my meal so it's just something we, we hope that other people can use. We have shirts made up. Just go to the site and pick up your sizes and give us an e email and, and to make an order. Absolutely. Which is our calling, it, which is more than our calling. You know, we, there's a word that, that you hate oh, when boy. Babylon uses it. There's a word that you hate when Babylon uses it. And they used it a lot over the last few years. And that word is mandate. And you have said, oh, I'm mandate. under no mandate. I'm under a God date. And there is a God date given to his people so that he can, through us, be that restorer that you talked about. Because we have this tendency to uh, wait on him to do things that he has already commanded us to do. <laughs> yeah. And, it, that, and that's one of the most amazing things to me is, is, is that, that, that exact question. So I've, I've got four different points of restoration on my note card here that I want to talk about tonight. But we can start off with a discussion on restoring his kingdom. Okay, because you just talked about that. You just brought that up. So okay. when, when we talk about restoring his kingdom, we're talking about 
we're talking about on earth as it is in heaven. Right. Okay. Because obviously, obviously, he is right now at the right hand of the Father making right. intercession for us. Okay. Right. That, that is where he is at this time. So he has given us a mandate. Oh, there's that word. Okay. Right. But he's, he's given us a mandate in order, <coughs> in order to restore his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So when he gives us clues in the scripture and the kingdom of heaven is like, right? right. When he gives us right. those clues, he's telling us what he wants us to do. He's not giving us some cool little, you know, story, little bedtime story, you know, fairy tale. You know, it's not just some kind of cool little, cool little thing that you can throw a sermon together on Sunday and preach it to the masses and go home and, you know, and, and have roast pastor. It, that's, that is not the, the you know, that's not the, the cycle of the kingdom that he was hoping to establish. The cycle of the kingdom that he was hoping to establish is that we'd put those things into application and understand that the sower in the parable of the sower was him. He is the sower. In fact, we could do another whole show on the great sower. He is the sower. Okay. And, you know, and that the, that the, 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 the king that, that brought his servants forward on the parable of the talents and gave them talents, that king was him. Okay? Right. We talked about that on the great treasurer, too. You know, where we talked about that. how, how do you protect, you know, your, your finances from being attacked and, and stolen and, you know, and, and from uh, moth corrupting and all those kind of things, right? How do you do that? You give it to him. He's the king. He's the protector. He's the one that's got the responsibility for all those things. That's not on us. That's that's on him. But it's only on him if we do it his way. We can't go doing it Babylon's way and expect him to come to the rescue. Okay. <laughs> I'm sitting here listening and writing down some notes and, and it's making uh, making thoughts pop up in my head. Okay, so yeah. you said yeah, just like just like popcorn. You said we have a mandate from him, and it's okay. It's okay if the mandate comes from the Son of Man. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that, that, that's okay if that if that's where the mandate comes from. And you you just laid out his way versus Babylon's way. You know, the, a clash of two kingdoms. Yeah, I think that's the point. And everything you've mentioned is then according to his purposes, right? Purpose. According to his purpose. So. We take and we chop up the scripture to fit our purposes. Or we chop Oof. up, yeah, whatever. To, it's like uh, Romans 8, 28. For um, all, yeah. things, all things work together all for things. the good of those who love God and are called according to our own purposes. Are called according to what I want for tomorrow. It doesn't matter what happened because God's going to make something good yes. for me. No, it's and who mm -hmm. are called according to his purposes and that's what you just laid out that we've got to look for his purposes yeah brother mike brother mike what does okay. your wife do for a living oh she's a stripper well why is she a stripper because she's got to bring home the bacon buddy so we can eat oh okay well you know so can god does god is god gonna bless that is he gonna bless that i mean is that is that is that his purpose you know i i think his purpose is is I don't want to say this with any dogmatic emphasis. No, 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 just. But it, it's almost as if his purpose is singular, that this earth is restored. Yeah, and that this the kingdom and, is restored, and that his ways are restored, because that's one of the things that he gave us. You know, in Matthew chapter twenty-eight, it doesn't just say that. <clears throat> that he 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 has uh, that all authority in heaven and earth is his. It doesn't just tell us to go baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Okay, but it also says to teach them to observe everything that he has taught us. Exactly, exactly, and he taught us 
pray this way. <laughs> Thy kingdom come. Yeah. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we've got to go all the way. If that's the case, what is his purpose? We've got to examine the scripture from what? beginning to end to wow. determine what is that purpose. That is good. That is good. See, that's a good place to start right there. We should examine the scripture to find out what his purpose is. <clears throat> yeah, I like it. Good idea. Maybe we should do <laughs> maybe we should do that. <laughs> maybe we should do that, you know, in, in those in those buildings that, that people go to and worship at. Right. <laughs> right. Those, those red brick ones on every corner, right? <clears throat> yep, you know, with the ecclesia infrastructure of carpets and robes. Right. <clears throat> right. So yeah, look, yeah, I'm and I'm not trying to be <clears throat> I'm not trying to be vicious when I say you know, I make up this little thing about Mike, you know, what does your wife do and all that kind of stuff. Now, look, <clears throat> I realize, I realize that there are a lot of people that have, that, you know, they're caught up in this culture. Okay, this culture's tough. This culture really is tough. I mean, it, it, it eats a lot of us up and it spits a lot of us out. And we have to, we have to become uh, just... We have to become wise. We have to start to understand that there are things within this culture that, that God really does have a demand on us, you know, concerning. You know, we, there are things that we really shouldn't be doing. I mean, it's just how it is. Right. Well, it, it comes down to, you know, it, it just keeps amazing me how, how this, this report ended up becoming the Clash of Two Kingdoms report, the C2K report, because the more we dive into self-governing the more it forces you into the scripture the more you're in the scripture the more you come to realize everything is about these two kingdoms period i mean that is that is everything and and literally you know you end every program saying it's all about the blood and think of think of this that christ himself the son of god god made flesh god uh in in fleshly form through his only begotten son, not his only son, his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. It was a special event. He died to give us the kingdom, and it's only through that blood that we can obtain our freedom. Yes. And kingdom living is freedom living. It is, and I'm really glad you said that, because, see, you don't even know what my four restoration points were <laughs> okay you don't even know because i didn't tell you i didn't send you notes or anything uh nope. but but let's talk about the next one my next one is to restore true liberty okay true liberty now rick what are you talking about true liberty isn't the only real liberty true liberty well yeah it is but see we've been we've been experiencing in this world false liberty We've been experiencing false freedom where we believe that we're free because we're told that we're free, but we're actually captive to a system that keeps us, that keeps us separate from, uh, from, from God and distracted squirrel, you know, so that, <laughs> so that we can't, so that we can't ever come to a place of actually organizing the ecclesia in such a way to where we can actually fulfill the mandate of the Son of Man. Okay? That's the problem, is that we haven't really experienced true liberty. Yeah, okay. I know I just said something that is a sacred cow to people we live in we live in america and you think that you know what liberty is i i get that but let me tell you let me tell you without accountability i'm, I'm about to say something that everybody's going to be like what okay i'm going to say it though anyway because you know me i'm just going to spit it out so here's right. here's how it is you can't truly experience liberty true liberty without true accountability you can't right. do it you can't do it and here's the deal here's the deal what's the american dream randy tell, tell me what the typical american dream is give it to me 
Uh, it's uh, your your nice little uh, little house with a picket fence and a postage stamp yard and and a two car garage and you know maybe a boat you know in the driveway. How many boats? Uh, yeah, right. Two kids and a dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, a bunch of cars, right? Right. You know, a um, man with the most toys wins. You know. Yeah, maybe even a jet plane. Um, you know, right. at the airport. <clears throat> uh, these kind of things, right? And and who who controls all that stuff, Randy? And the American Dream. Who controls all that stuff? Uh, actually, who controls that is a. We can do a like. A uh, one-year series on who controls all that stuff because it goes back. Uh, well, to... I I know that, but but it, the American dream when you talk when you but, but when you're talking about dreaming, you know, of, of all this stuff in your dream, who controls it? In your dream, you yeah. control it. You in control reality. it, right? You right. control it. That's the whole thing, right? Okay, that's where I want to get to. That's, that's we misconstrue misconstrue Romans eight twenty eight because we're trying to control purposes when it's supposed supposed to be about His purposes. And and thank you because you're proving exactly what I'm what I'm trying to to get across. The American dream is selfish. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, it just is. It's it's selfish. The American dream is selfish. It's all about how much can I have, how much can I control. You know why? You know why, Randy? Because if I'm smart enough to get all the stuff, I must be smart enough to control it all. Right. Okay. I mean, <laughs> what that's, you're describing is is uh, the, then the American dream in that definition. Is the self-centered building of our own kingdom? <laughs> it is. It's the self-centered building of our own kingdom. In our own kingdom, uh, you know, if 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 you're if you're defining it by the American dream, it's it's not, it's not, and never can be true liberty. That's like 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 that which is found in Christ. If you're gonna have true liberty, you're gonna have accountability. And right. that accountability, you, you're going to have a choice as to which kingdom you're going to be accountable to. There are a lot of rich people, Randy, that are accountable to Babylon. And everybody, oh, yeah. and everybody, by the way, and you're going to find this out if you haven't already listened to, to the first war room, go listen to the first war room because you're going to find out this point I'm about to make right now is an absolute fact. All these rich cats... Okay, these fat cats, and I know I can, I, I I can model you the fat part, but not the rich part. Okay, but these 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 fat cats, <laughs> these fat cats that are out there, man. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now. They look like <laughs> they own and control everything. They don't. They have pledged their lives to this Babylonian system, which controls them. OK, oh, yeah. and and although they have a lot of wealth, that wealth can be boom gone in a heartbeat because right. Babylon can take it away. Who he who gives can take it away. Who oh, would yeah. you rather be your master? Who's a fairer master, Babylon or Jesus? OK, right. you tell me, who do you want to serve? So so if you have riches and you've pledged them to Jesus, OK, you're going to operate in a different way. It kind of sounds like the the uh, the parable of the talents, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, it is, it, you know, he's given you a talents. He's given you talents. You've invested those talents. You've been enriched by it. And what does the guy do at the end? He gives it back to Jesus. Right. Now, does that mean you're going to throw it in your tithe plate? No. That doesn't mean throw it in the tithe plate. That's not how you give it back to Jesus. You're going to give him control of the uh, assets. Okay? You're going to give him control. You have accountability. Right. We are living in times of Babylonian desperation. 
and no one knows what pestilence will be released next. But it's not a time to fear. God's healers are stepping up to the plate all over the earth. There is no better example than Dr. Zelenko's protocol. Dr. Zelenko's Z-Stack is proven to maintain your immune system and keep it resilient and resistant. Go to c2kreport.com and click the Z-Stack logo to join the thousands of people building a resilient and resistant immune system. Save 5% by entering coupon code C2K at checkout. Thank you, Dr. Zelenko, for partnering with C2K. And um, the other kingdom uh, doesn't even give you enough to, to, to choose whether to have control or not. You've got to continually pay them just to keep breathing. Uh, unless, unless you go through their rites of passage. Right. If you go through their rites of passage, they'll, they'll enrich you in a heartbeat. But they're also going to own your soul. They're going to own your soul. Mm-hmm. Boy, yeah, it's, it's going to be that crossroads in Louisiana real quick. Yeah, exactly. Real quick. <laughs> so, so yeah, true liberty. Okay. Restoration of true liberty. You know what? You know what the great restorer does? The great restorer comes and he restores true liberty. James talks about liberty. The book of James. You want to look that up real quick, Randy? Um, sure. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not forget a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Ooh, so what 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 does it mean to be a doer of the work, Randy? What's 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 that what's that about? You, yeah, I'm sure you remember back in the days of like uh, VBS and stuff. We, we, of course, we memorized it in the cage and the King James version. Be you doers of the word, not hearers only. Uh, that that's a uh, call to action, is it not? A call to action. So <clears throat> you mean I actually have to, you know, do something? <laughs> commit to do something? I mean, like, wow, you know. So the perfect law of liberty, guys, you know. The perfect law of liberty, that, that, is the, that is what Jesus, this, this, his kingdom, that's what he wants to restore. He wants to restore the perfect law of liberty, but, they, but it, there's two sides to the coin. He'll, he'll restore the perfect law of liberty, but you've got to do something. That's, that's another one of those places we, uh, we chop up the word of God to, to, uh, to fit, to become a building block of our own self-centered kingdom that we're building uh, because a, a lot of those things are conditional uh, and that law of liberty is one of those things you know there's always a quid there's always a quid pro pro oh yeah <laughs> there, there, right. there is there is there always is there, you you can't really get away from one you know i mean it's it's that's what a contract is it, right. it's it's a contract you you know this is actually a, a contract randy i mean if you want the perfect law of liberty, hey, it's it, it it's free to you. It's free. It's not. Here's, it's, here's the condition to receive it. But the condition is you got some work to do. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. You got some work to do. So so the great restorer, you know, came to restore his kingdom. And he came to restore true liberty. Those are those are the first the first two, that. <clears throat> that I wanted to hit on because, you know, the Lord during the week, guys, I'll be cutting, I'll be cutting some top sirloin or some, or a, or a ribeye or, you know, or, you know, pork or whatever. Cause I, I, I got to cut all kinds of things at the store. I, I'm cutting it up and, and Just don't cut your own thumb. Well, yeah, <laughs> that, that hasn't happened so far, but, but, as I'm cutting, you know, I'm having a conversation with the Lord and he is giving me downloads of things and I'm writing it down. I'm going, oh, OK, man, that's that's good. That's good. Oh, yeah. Give me you got any more. Oh, you, he's always got more. He's always got more. You know, so it's like so I'm just writing it down, writing it down, writing it down, you know. So just I be got, careful you don't write it like on, on the tag you're putting on the meat and somebody will buy that 
that piece of ribbon. I go, what's this mean? Uh, the law of liberty written on my, on my stake. <laughs> I only write that if the price comes out to six dollars and sixty six cents. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. write law of liberty on her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and by the way, you could tell that this is not this. This did not come from a Baptist God because it's not three points. I got four. I got four. Okay. I got four. <laughs> that was a little. You got a that three was a little. That was a little joke, little joke. You know, Randy and I, we like to kind of kick each other a little bit about the, about our past. So, okay, <clears throat> the next one, and this is gonna be fun right here. Okay, this this one's gonna be fun because we got to talk about things that people just don't like to talk about. <laughs> okay, the next great restoration that God wants to do is God wants to restore paradise. Now. Some people are going to say, well, isn't that what he promised the thief on the cross? You know, today you'll be with me in paradise. So when he talks about paradise, that's just about heaven, right? That's just about heaven. It's just about heaven. Paradise is only about heaven. Well, except there was this cool little thing that happened. For those of you that read, you know, historically relevant documents like the Apocrypha, okay, there's a cool little detail in there about this five and a half day prophecy that was given to Adam from from this entity called the Word, which we all know what that is, right? What is in in uh, in in the beginning of Matthew? It says the Word, the the Word was God, right? Right. So the the, the Word we're talking about this is this is the Actually, I think it's in the beginning of God, and the and um, and the Word was God. And the Word was with God, and yeah, yeah. This this word is literally like Jesus, like a pre. I don't know. I don't know what form. I can I don't. I don't know what what it looked like. I just know that the Word came to Adam and gave him the Word about a five and a half day prophecy. In and a day is as a thousand years, right? A thousand years right. is as a day. So five. Five and a half days equals five and a half or five, five and a half thousand years. <clears throat> so five thousand five hundred years. And then and then uh, there's the Ark of the Testimony, by the way, the Ark of the Covenant actually bears testimony to that five and a half days. Because if you add up all the measurements of the Ark, it adds up to five and a half cubits. And that's exactly when Pilate, in another book in the Apocrypha, uh, called the uh, Gospel of Nicodemus, it, when when you when you read, Pilate comes into the into the uh, into the temple, and asks for them to bring out the great book of the law. Right, and they got four right. guys that had to bring it out because it was so big. Right, they bring right. out this great book of the law, and they open it up. And by the way, it had seventy books in it, so that's kind of interesting. That's for another right. day. That's for another day. Right. But um, they open it up and they read They read this. And Pilate asked them one question. Tell me whether Jesus is the Messiah. And was it prophesied in, in this book? They open up to the part of the scripture that talks about the Ark of the Covenant. The Covenant, the Ark of their Testimony. Think about mm -hmm. that for a minute. What's it testifying? Okay. <laughs> it's huge. So, and, and they talk about how it all adds up to five and a half cubits and that that was the testimony of the number of years it was going to be before Jesus came. And when they added up the years from the time of Adam being kicked out of the garden to the time of the cross, it was 5,500 years. Guys, Okay, so, okay, some of you don't read the Apocrypha. That's fine. You don't have to. But they're witnesses. And these witnesses are bearing witness to this, to this prophecy of Adam being able to return to paradise. Okay? Now, Randy shared something really cool the other day that also came from the Gospel of Nicodemus where Jesus comes to the gates of hell. Right? Right. Okay. Adam in that testimony is 
Giddy as a school kid, okay, and by the way, I'm I'm referring I'm I'm referencing uh, Scrooge, uh, there. You know the, the Scrooge talked about being as giddy <laughs> as a school school child, okay. But he's as giddy as a school child, okay, and and he's he's realizing that it is the time of the restoration. He's about to be restore restored into paradise. Okay, he's about to be restored in the paradise. It's come into fruition. Finally, those five and a half days have manifested. He's in a holding place. And now Jesus is coming to rescue him out of the out of that place and take him into paradise as he was promised. Okay, all this stuff lines up. All these witnesses is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful picture. Okay, beautiful, beautiful picture. Did you know? That on the day that Adam was restored to paradise, you were too. We are restored to paradise. So let me ask you a question. I'm going to ask this openly. Whoever's on here can 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 answer. I guess it's just going to be you, Randy. Okay. <clears throat> but let me ask you a question. Are you living in paradise? At moments, <laughs> at the moment, I'm somewhere else. <laughs> we have not, we haven't, we haven't managed that one. But do you no. know that we're able to? Yes, absolutely. I agree with that statement. We're able to because the, the mandate that was given to Adam was passed down to us. And it was only done, it was only passed down to us through the work of the, of the cross. And, and the story you're describing, Adam was restored to paradise, but his mandate was that mantle of responsibility was was now placed on uh, those who would follow Jesus Christ. Because, uh, yeah, you described it well. I mean, uh, Adam was actually in the beginning created as God's invader of this world, uh, and that can get into a whole lot of other discussion uh, but there was a clash of two kingdoms even then, brother. It was a C2K. This is a C2K report right here. There was a clash of two kingdoms. Adam was placed here as the invader, God's invader of this world. Uh, and he was living in paradise, as you so aptly described. He's living in paradise. He had this beautiful wife. Uh, and everything was perfect. They could have even partaken of the tree of life. And everything would have been just... Uh, you know, hunky dory every day. They they literally Perfect. for a moment in time, for a moment in the history <laughs> of man, there literally was uh, kingdom life. There was righteousness. There was peace. There was joy. There was total fulfillment of God's plan for a moment in time. And then, of course, we know what happened. There was the fall, and now we're, even, we have this chaos and sickness and pain. Even, and even dominion. Even dominion. Even, he he even yeah. achieved he even achieved dominion because what yeah. what happened in the garden when God brought all the animals to Adam and says you name them. Okay. He, he had authority to do that. Yes. He had dominion over them. They he had didn't, dominion. Uh, they didn't eat him. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't eat him. Yeah. Right. So so we go from that paradise that you that you described to where we're living at today. It is exactly the same thing as Adam had, and then he lost it. But through what? Through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that you just described, and he's standing at the gates, the gates of hell, and he tells <laughs> the gates to open. That is restoration. The problem is, it's a contractual reg- uh, restoration that has terms and conditions. Yeah, it has term- the terms and conditions. And and. You know, this is where we can go uh, many different ways. <laughs> we can split off on this conversation into all kinds of different madness. Okay. Oh, yeah. for, for, first, first thing I want to say is, um, and I'm not correcting you. This isn't a this isn't a me correcting Randy. I'm just I want to correct the record. the The idea that that Adam lost something. Okay, I. I, I want to say he didn't lose anything. 
his license was suspended. <laughs> okay, he was given license because he was an agent of God. He was his seed line. Okay, right. He was given license, and that his license was suspended, so he could not operate under that license for some time because of a contractual obligation that he that he made with the other kingdom. Right. So, so what what happened was that license was restored on the cross. Okay, that license was restored. So now, Adam and his entire line, which by the way is you and me, and everybody else watching this program, we have now the authority to to build and live in paradise. We can do that. But here's the problem. We haven't ever created an apparatus that's capable of doing that. Mm -mm. Okay? We still have a kingdom. We still have a world that's ruled by the Luciferian council and the Luciferian system. Luciferian kingdom. And right. so, so we, the Ecclesia, have to rise up and first take charge. Okay? That's the first thing <coughs> that we have to do. Secondly... We've got to take this model that was that that we have been operating in for <clears throat> thousands of years, and we've got to re refresh it. We've got to refresh the model because <clears throat> this model that we have will never accomplish paradise. It will never accomplish the building of the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. We've got to refresh the model. We've got to look at the scriptures more carefully, and we've got to build it in accordance with the scriptures. You know, uh, it's in it's in Daniel. I can't tell you exactly where, but it's, it's in Daniel. Uh, he says that the, that the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And it's like you're describing... Like maybe it was God's plan, his purpose, go back to what the terms we used earlier, his purpose is that we, the people, uh, and I like that, we the people, those being his saints, are supposed to take the kingdom and bring the, king, bring the kingdom of, of God up on this earth by squelching or overcoming or having dominion over or subduing the kingdom of darkness. You know, you said something that is going to make some people very uncomfortable. But I hope that they are uncomfortable. You said, we the people, and you used it in a way that only included, it was very inclusive, right? It only mm -hmm. included the sons of God. It only included right. the, <laughs> the people of God. Okay? Absolutely. Let me tell you why I like that. Because they're the only ones that have authority. They're the only ones that have the renewed license. <laughs> yeah. They're the only ones that have authority. Okay? Let me give you a quick little uh, current event, right? Tulsi Gabbard. Have you heard about Tulsi Gabbard? So Tulsi no. Gabbard was a, de was a Democratic candidate for president of the United States of America, Babylon Corporation. Right? Okay. Okay, well, Tulsi Gabbard is pretty much saying, you know, hey, you know what? These Democrats, they're actually Democrats. I, I don't want to be with them anymore, so I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to become something else. <laughs> okay, but see, everybody, a lot of people are rejoicing with her because, you know, she's making these choices, and it seems like, <laughs> seems like all these things are so great and cool, you know? But let me let me tell you why I have tre uh, trepidation. I have trepidation because Tulsi Gabbard is a Hindu. Did you know that? No. She's a Hindu. She doesn't serve this kingdom. Wow. She serves the other kingdom because the other king this kingdom doesn't have Hindus in it. Right. Hindus can't serve this kingdom because Hindus don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay, now, Rick, that's so mean that you say that. 
this is America where you can have a freedom of religion. Well, actually, better go read that again. And, because religion has a very specific meaning. And it, religion is actually talking about Jesus Christ. It's actually talking about those denominations that serve Jesus Christ. It's not giving the option to be a Buddhist, a Satanist, a Muslim, a uh, you know, a, a, a Judaist, a Talmudist, a Zionist, you know, all these kind of things. It's not giving you those options in order for you to attain uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the defense of the First Amendment. The defense of the First Amendment is for the sons of God. It's for the Christian. It is for the one who is aligned with Jesus Christ because that is the definition of religion. And the invitation exists and remains open for them to enter into that. They can. They but can you enter. Can't be, you can't serve two masters. You can't serve two masters. And we can't trust you if you serve the other one. Because right. you know what? We have a long history of proving that out, don't we, Randy? Mm -hmm. Isn't there a long history of people who serve the other master being not so good? Not so good. <laughs> okay. I mean, guys, think about it. My why is referred to as the kingdom of darkness. <laughs> so, sorry if that blows somebody's, um, you know, somebody's patriotism or uh, you know somebody's idea of what's uh, what America was built on. But we've been lied to for a long time. This idea of separation of church and state, um, it's it's. Uh, first of all, you know, that's totally bogus. It's bogus because how do you separate church and state and then and then instruct Congress that they can make no law, uh, you know, against the uh, uh, against the exercise of religion? Right. Now you, so you can't have both ways. Well, it's exactly why they had to uh, create the corporation they created so that they could... They could sure. do it that way. I mean, it's exactly why they had to do it. Because under the, under the du jour, uh, that was not possible. So, so Babylon, uh, go ahead and weep, because your days are numbered. Um, you know, your the <clears throat> restoration of paradise is underway. It's just a matter of time before the ecclesia rises to their feet with clean hands and clean feet, untethered from you. And totally dedicated to making sure that everything gets restored exactly to the letter of the law of the scripture. So you can you can just go ahead and uh, <clears throat> kiss all your babies goodnight and get ready to, uh, you know, uh, eyeball a lot of steel bars. <laughs> Um, that's three, brother. Yeah, that's three. That's three. There's one more, and this is uh, this is this is a doozy. This is a doozy. Did you also know that the restorer, the great restorer, came to restore his house? Ooh, that's a big one. He came to restore his house, but Rick, you know, what do you mean he came to restore his house? You know, aren't we, you know, aren't we all, you know, tethered to Babylon without any way of escape? No, we're not. <laughs> we have a way of escape. Okay. <laughs> We've talked about it since the second show, man. Authentication is your way of escape from the Babylonian uh, enslavement. Okay. And then, and then in order to get you completely set up to be restored, to, for your house to be restored, you start to legislate your house under the law of God. Okay? Now, are you ready for my big pet peeve, Randy? Tell me your pet peeve. <clears throat> Why is it that Babylon can defend Babylon vehemently? Is that the word? Is that a correct word? Yep. Okay. Yep. Why? 
Why is it the Babylon can do that? Okay, they can they can fight tooth and nail to defend their law, which has no authority whatsoever, no authority whatsoever to the child of God. Okay, but when it comes to the child of God defending their law, we are so weak. We will yeah. bend, we will bend and bend and bend and bend and bend. Why? Why is it that we bend, Randy? Why do we do that? Why don't we vehemently defend the law of God? I mean, if we don't, can we even say that we believe it, we follow it, or we trust him? I mean, <clears throat> let me give you an example. <laughs> give me an example. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. There's a thing going around TikTok. Right. Yes, I'm still on TikTok because you know what? I get a lot of intelligence from TikTok. It's like my intel place. You know, I go, I go there to see what's going on in the world. So I'm still on TikTok, but I'm watching TikToks, and I get this, I get this TikTok, and Stacey Abrams, you know, Stacey Abrams, you know who that is, Georgia, you know, missing five or six teeth. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> Stacey Abrams, right? She gets up there and she's talking to this audience and she's saying, there's nowhere in the Bible that talks about abortion. You know, there's nothing in the Bible about it, okay? It's woman's health. We can't let these people, you know, uh, change us. <laughs> you know, you're a current governor and blah, 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 blah. Vote for me. I'm the perfect woman that's going to get you your babies killed. Okay? All right. So <laughs> she goes through this whole speech. They cut it. And then they got this pastor that comes on. And I mean, he is a, he's a great pastor. Don't get me wrong. The guy's talking about, I don't follow the instructions of government. I follow the instructions of Jesus Christ. He is my king. You know? Okay. <clears throat> Good stuff. <coughs> of course, he's preaching from a 501c3, which is what? It's a, it's it's basically a government church that's licensed, yeah, yeah, licensed by the government, uh, you know, to 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 get be uh, to to receive benefits from Babylon. And then, secondly, um, you know. <sighs> These these guys they get up there and they say these things, and then the the first thing they do when they're challenged by Babylon, is, you know, they go get an attorney. Which is what, an attorney from Babylon, mm -hmm. right? And then they go to court, you know, which is what, it's a it's a den of vipers, for Babylon, right? What does the scriptures uh, tell us to do? Don't take, don't take your, you know, don't take your brother to the heathens. Right. Settle don't, the matter on yeah. the way. Settle the matter on the way or else you'll be thrown into prison. Yeah. You know, you think Jesus might have known something? You think, you think Paul might have known something there, you know, when he said that? Like, like maybe he had experienced being thrown in jail on, you know, uh, you know, or something like that. You think Randy maybe he had some kind of experience, you know, that you know, he I might he, he hand knowledge, yeah. <laughs> he might have said, you know what, guys, if you if you don't settle on the way, they're gonna throw you in jail because they hate Christians. They hate you oh, guys. Yeah. They hate you guys. So, you know, uh you you know, settle the matter on the way. How do you do that with the heathen? Heathen don't see it like you, they don't have discernment. They don't have the ability to to make righteous decisions, the heathen. Oh, but they have intellect. Oh, well, we see where intellect has gotten us. Right? Yeah. Doesn't Noah, Yuval, Harari have intellect? I don't know if he ha if he has intellect or if it's been, you know, programmed into him and he's just, he's actually a, an android and he's a, you know, he's computer functioning. No, the, you know, the android. Not, not at all. The android is Zuckerberg. That's an android. Oh, okay. okay. You look at that guy, you could tell he's an android, okay? All right. But Noah Yuval Harari, this dude 
is an intellect of intellects. You know, you know who, you, you know who Barack Obama's favorite intellect is in the world? Yuval okay. Harari. Yeah. Yuval is his favorite. To, uh, he's an advisor to uh, Klaus Schwab too, isn't Klaus he? Klaus Schwab, another intellect. Here, let me give you another intellect. Bill Gates. You like him? He's a nice guy, right? I mean, these intellects, these guys who are intellectuals, you know, you know, I went to college and got 55 degrees and you know, I'm I'm an intellect. Um guys, sing themselves to be wise. <laughs> I mean, here's here's my favorite intellect of all time. Bill Nye, the science guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Right. Intellect all right? Intellect doesn't get us anywhere, man. That's why when you take your matter to the heathen, they're going to judge it by their law and by their intellect. And their intellect doesn't have discernment. It doesn't. It does. Yeah. And God uses the foolish things of this world to confound those intellects and confound the wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why he's using us. That's why, yep, he's using us. That's exactly. You called us uh, last night on the show, you called us bumpkins. You know, I like that word. Did I? Okay. Yeah, I like that word, bumpkins. <clears throat> That's probably about right. You should have said barefooted bumpkins, though, because, you know, <laughs> right. that's pretty much what I am, too. You know, I mean, you guys know my history, right? In my history, my dad was Cuban and my mom's a hillbilly. So, yeah, the barefoot thing is totally in my blood. Okay. <laughs> totally. Totally in my blood. So so we can we can do that. So 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 Randy, he came to restore his house. And you know what part of his house is, Randy? Your house. Right. My house. Right. The house of the listeners. That's his house. It's each house is a leaf on the vine. Okay? Picture it that way. Each house is a leaf on the vine. And as we come together, we make a beautiful, beautiful tree. Okay? We are in his family tree. And so as he comes to restore his house, he's calling on you to restore yours. Isn't there always duality here? Yes. Yes. I mean, he really can't do it by himself. Oh, Rick, but you, you know, you shouldn't say things like that, that he can't do it by himself. God is all knowing and all everything. He could do it all himself. What a boring life that would be. <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> I don't want to go there, so I'm not going to. But my, so, but, but my point is, my point is, that's not how he chooses to do things. That is not how he chooses to do things. He gives us the opportunity to decide for ourselves as to whether or not we want to follow his ways. We want to be a part of his house, to join his family. I, I, I look at it this way. When you get down to restoring his house, I go back, I go back to, to Adam. I go back to the first Adam. I go back to the Garden of Eden. And there, there was um, a mandate, a commandment given to Adam to, to be fruitful and multiply. He needed Adam to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. That was part of the war, the clash of two kingdoms. And he wanted that Adamic seed line to, to outnumber another, another seed line. And there and that was, yeah. So he, so how do we, and now Adam is gone, the second Adam's come, Jesus has come, and, and what do we talk about all the time here in Matthew 28, that all authority in heaven and earth was given to Jesus Christ, and you said it in this show, even there's more to it than that. Have we so, read that? Oh, we, okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so why else, why else would he bestow on us the authority of his name, Unless it's to build his house, his kingdom, to, to, to fulfill that which Adam didn't. It's not so we can build our own ludicrous, pain-filled kingdoms. It's to build mm -hmm. his kingdom. So let's take Adam's mandate to be fruitful and multiply. Okay, 
We've yep. got to come through the cross now and come to where we're at today. So we're going to, res- to restore his house. He's still going to use his saints. He's going to use that Adamic seed line. Right. And how are we going to do that? We're going to build up what you just said. Every time we establish a house outside of Babylon and make it part of his ecclesia, we're being fruitful and we're mar- multiplying. And that was the original plan. Oh. And that's how we win this clash of two kingdoms. That That is a beautiful, beautiful picture. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. <clears throat> he came to restore his house. And his house has, you know, his his desire would be that all of us would build a house. Every every man on this earth. Okay? All of mankind. That would be his desire, right? He would not want right. to lose one soul. He would not. Okay? But... We have to make ultimately that choice. It's up to us. You know, and, and we're commanded to be part of that res- restoration, to restore the earth. We're commanded multiple places in the Bible. I, I had jotted down some notes before before we started the call, just uh, Isaiah 49, 8, Daniel 9, 25, but the only two I wrote down for it, the command comes directly to us. That same command that was given to Adam in the garden is now coming to us to restore the earth. Yeah. It's always been through us that God wanted to, to build us. Otherwise, we're just we're just puppets on a string. Otherwise, you know, we're, we're nothing. But as we get down to your fourth one here, and I'm looking at one through four, we could go on and on and on with you list. You do know <laughs> I know, that. I know that. You do know that. I mean, we could get into uh, what is it, Joel, where he's going to restore everything that the locust ate and the worms oh. ate. All oh, that. Yeah. Zephaniah three nine. He's going to restore to us a pure language, um, and uh, and Zechariah nine twelve. We are prisoners of hope right now, and God's going to restore double to us, um, and uh, over and over. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The things that that are going to be restored, and you got you've got to go back to that moment in time as that the cross has, has been uh, witnessed by those disciples who followed Jesus, uh, and and they they saw the resurrection and next and now they've they've seen the ascension and they've gotten the command. And, and they're, they go back and they're waiting for what? They're waiting for the Holy Spirit. And, they're in, and, the, and, the, and of course, we, then they, the, the, the day of Pentecost yep. and, and the, the tongues of fire and, and a mighty rushing wind. And they go out and they, they preach in the streets, right? Yep. Acts chapter 3. Uh, Peter's preaching to the crowd. And this is what he tells them. He says, and he shall send Jesus our Messiah, which before was already preached to you, whom the heavens must receive. And he'd been, he'd already ascended to the heavens must receive. And he said, he's going to stay there. The heavens going to keep him for a while until the restitution or restoration of all things. So let me read that together without interrupting myself. He, he shall send Jesus our Messiah, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the restitution of all things which which God hath spoken by the mouth of all of his his holy prophets since the world began. So what's happening here? Since the world began, from Genesis to Revelation, through the Apocrypha, since the world began, it's been uh, coming to, to, to us the restitution of all things, all things, all. There's that word again, brother, all things. And it is, we're given the authority of his name. It's been bestowed on us. You said it, the license was revoked, the license was renewed. It's been bestowed on us. It is because we are part and parcel of that restoration. And we are sitting on our duffs waiting for some <laughs> magic, uh, you know, oh, explosion man. to happen 
that all things are restored and I have I got I've got my paycheck. It's in the it's it's in the bank now and I yeah. have the in the driveway. Yep. Yep. And and yep. uh no, it is uh, in Daniel chapter seven he says, But the saints Ooh, who are those people? The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Uh, and it is us that, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Yep. And all dominion shall sure serve and what? Obey him. That mandate is put on us. A responsibility is put on us on us the license has been given to us we're taught to pray in his name under the authority that he has not any authority that we have it is through us the same as it was to be through adam mm. now it's to be through us that this um we're supposed to be kingdom builders in fact we did a few series called the kingdom builder series mm. kingdom builders series we're to be kingdom builders we're not supposed to be watching somebody else build the kingdom. We're supposed to be kingdom building. That is the restoration. You and I should have a syndicated show. I'm telling you, there's got to be somebody out there who is willing to bring us on to their paid, you know, paid broadcast and have a, we, you and I do a daily show because more revelation and download. Do you see the download arrow? Right now, the, is is there one? Is there one there or I not? See, I see it there. I see it. Yeah. <clears throat> There's more revelation and download that happens when you're when when we go on Rick and Randy rants than at any other time. Okay. Let me tell you what just happened in my head. You were telling me that. There's two ways we could that that could be fulfilled. Okay. The way that people and prophets and, you know, everybody sees it, it seems, <laughs> is that Jesus is going to be the one to come and restore all things. <laughs> I don't know. Just, just hold, on. hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He was the second Adam, right? Right. He was the second Adam. Now, if he came and restored all things, um, would, wouldn't that be... Wouldn't he then be the third Adam? So, so he would be, he would be, the second and the third Adam, and that kind of doesn't like make any sense because there's confusion there. So here's what I'm thinking, right? Here's another option. The other option is, we are the ones that restore the kingdom. Okay, and when it's fully restored, then he comes and he reigns and rules. That oh, yeah. makes that makes us. The third Adam. Yeah. Think about that for a second. Is your brain smoking like mine is right now? I'm telling you, there, yeah, this, there's something here. Oh yeah, it, it, you can go back to, to the <clears throat> earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and 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 the earth is His footstool. But what else is His footstool? What else in the Scripture is made His footstool? His enemies are made His footstool, <clears throat> right? His enemies are made his footstool. And how can we see the return of Jesus to to this earth if this earth is not his footstool? If his enemies are not made his footstool? If his saints have not prepared, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, John the Baptist came to make a way for the <laughs> Lord. He prepared a way for the Lord. I think we have fallen short of preparing or making a way for the Lord. We want we want the end without the journey to get there. And see, there's, not, and there's another piece here, too. Okay. And I, did, I don't know if you saw the arrow, but um, there was another arrow there just a second ago. So he tells us, he tells us when it comes to this, to, to the wheat and the chaff. Okay. To... To lead, let them grow together. Let them grow together, yeah. Let them grow together. But, Randy, do you see an ecclesia infrastructure anywhere? So are they growing together or is it all chaff? Right. So there must come a day, Randy, there must come a day 
when the wheat and the shaft grow together, that where the Babylonian system is still functioning in some way, but an Ecclesia system is also functioning, and they're growing together, there, there's going to have to be spots where there's sanctuary for the Ecclesia, and there's spots where the Babylonian system is operating, and they're to grow together, they're to operate both at the same time. And then who is it that comes and makes the, and separates the wheat from the chaff? It's Jesus himself. The That's Jesus. That. That's not us. That's not us. That's Jesus. Okay? That's Jesus. Uh, you've got to listen to this statement since you said that. And, and this one, I'm, I'm, this isn't coming from the scripture. This is a person's opinion. And is the, the man's name is Larry McGuire. It's actually pronounced McGuire. But Larry says this. Daniel is given great understanding that it is through the saints that Satan's whole Antichrist conspiracy will be destroyed, that the dominion of Satan that presently presides over the earth is to be taken away by the saints through the, vi through the victory of Jesus in his death for us on the cross and his, res his resurrection, which then has restored the kingdom mandate to us. Well, there is no doubt in my mind, in my soul, in my heart, anywhere in my being, there is no doubt that the kingdom mandate is all about us. It is all about us. Okay? And we are the ones that have to fulfill it. There is no doubt in my mind that we have to be the ones to fulfill it. Okay? Klaus Schwab's not going to. Nope. Okay? T.D. Jakes, he's had a lot of time. He's getting old, okay? He's had a lot of time to do it, and has he? No, he hasn't. He hasn't done a lick. He has not. He might have brought people to the kingdom. Okay, I don't want. I don't want to totally throw these guys under the bus. There's people who've come to the kingdom due to T.D. Jakes. Right. Okay. I. I. That's great. I mean, I. I. Uh, I. I applaud him for that, and you know what? There's reward there. Okay, there's your ward. But here's the deal. There's also judgment, too. There's also judgment. The same God who's a God of love and represents love in its purest form is the same God who represents judgment. I mean, you already said it. There's no liberty without accountability. There isn't. There isn't. There's no liberty without accountability. So, yeah. No doubt, I mean, we, how many times has a C2K report got to say it? We have zero infrastructure. Heck, at this point, Randy, we don't even have an apparatus. Okay? That's coming. But you know what we do have, brother? What do we have? We have some men and women, a few houses here and there, that we got our shovels out. And picks out. We can't even really afford a backhoe yet, but we're we're digging a foundation. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're digging a foundation, we are, and we're going to build an apparatus on it. We are. You know what we're building? An embassy. An embassy. And that yeah. that embassy is gonna is all we need. One little office. You know, it goes back to what we talked about: the treasury, right? The great yeah. treasurer. Remember, I laid out this whole plan. Right. I laid out this whole plan. What did I say you needed? One little office. If your church has one little office, <clears throat> you can run the entire thing through one tiny office. Okay? And you could have you could have a great amount of wealth and substance coming through there for the purpose of the Ecclesia and to benefit creation. One little office. You know, if we had that embassy <clears throat> and, we, and, and we had the, uh, an understanding through this system that we're functioning under a contract from the great contractor, <laughs> okay, from, the, from God Almighty. Yep. There, in fact, I think you sent it to me. You sent me a... a, a, a Maybe it was a tweet or something where uh, uh, a gentleman had just gotten arrested that was associated with the Salt and Light Brigades. Yes. Um, and he was a good man. 
And I did some investigating in, into that. And he's not really worried about what they're trying to do to him. They don't have anything. But uh, the the piece kind of made it look like they're bringing the Salt and Light Brigade into a bad, bad light. Those Several of those men, they, they, they heard a call. And they knew, we've got to do something. And, and they... They came together and started becoming proactive in spreading the gospel and saying, we're standing on, on the founding documents of this country. And now many, many of those men are realizing we have no, we have no safe place when we stand and make, make, uh, make this noise. <clears throat> That's right. And they're coming into the ecclesia. They're establishing their house which is his house, which is your fourth point. Uh, and we're beginning to build that embassy because if we had that embassy, where do you go when you're in a foreign land and, you, and, and you're being pursued by the enemy? You go to the embassy. Where do you go when you're in the Old Testament and you, you, you made a mistake and you have to run? Where do you go? They ran to the temple and they grabbed hold of the altar. And they they, the horns of the they altar. also had sanctuary cities where they could go and oh, they yes, could they find did. and they, they could find sanctuary. sanctuary. Okay, that is what an embassy is. It's sanctuary. Yeah, it's sanctuary. It's safety. It's a place where uh, a um, the true law form is going to be recognized. Uh, yeah, I, but, you know, I, I need. We need to pray for those men because. They're, they don't need to suffer for, for doing nothing more than saying, hey, we don't think this is right. You know, maybe we should examine what's going on here. And you have a system that says, no, don't draw attention to any of the bad things we did. That's, <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to you know, throw you in chains for drawing attention to the bad things we did. Uh, but yeah. Uh, building that embassy, building that sanctuary, uh, that is that is so important. It's so That's why we're doing the C2K report. Yes. So we can, we can bring up, so we can fulfill that, uh, be fruitful and multiply. Yes. Absolutely. Because how do you subdue and have dominion if you weren't fruitful and multiplied? Yep. Everything you do has got to have purpose. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's a Florida joke right there. That was a Florida joke, yeah. But, but uh, you know, like you said, Randy, we could go on and on and on and on and on because there's so many points of restoration that, you know, <clears throat> for, the, for the Ecclesia, so many points of restoration for this earth. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we could go absolutely on and on and on. Uh, <clears throat> I guess my takeaway is understanding the mandate that was given to Adam through Jesus Christ has now come to us and we've got to pick up that, that mantle. Yeah, you know, uh, okay, so <clears throat> two things we said tonight that, that could kind of sum that up, okay? The license has been renewed, okay? Well, I, I guess from from my perspective, there's two things, right? The license has been renewed, so now you know the game is on. You have all the opportunity that we were created to 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 have is is in front of us. All we've got to do is just reach out and take it. Okay. <clears throat> One. <clears throat> the the second thing is is something I forgot. I have, I can't remember what it was now. But anyway, <laughs> I live there. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh, we're the third atom. Oh, okay. Yeah. The ecclesia is the third atom. Okay. We are the ones responsible for the restoration of the earth. Right. Earth. Okay. On earth as it is in heaven. He's there. We're here. We need get busy. We need work. We need do. You know, absolutely. So, so here we go, guys. <clears throat> I hope that you've enjoyed this one, the Great Restorer. Okay, 
Uh, no movie references tonight. Isn't that amazing? No, never, never made a single movie <laughs> reference. <laughs> but the Great Restore. Uh, please, if you enjoyed this, you know, pass it on to your best friend. Pass it on to your best enemy. Uh, is that right? Best enemy or worst enemy? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so, you know, get it out there. Subscribe, like. You know, all those kind of things. And uh, please, you know, just share information about the C2K report and the projects that we have going on. The main project we have going on is to raise up uh, houses for the Lord, man. Houses for the Lord. And if you want to know how to do that, go to c2kreportconference.info and you're going to learn how. Yep, especially if you come to the, the conference, you will definitely learn how. There is no question about that. So, God bless you all. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Uh, you guys you guys endure a lot for coming to these reports because these two barefoot bumpkins, uh, as Randy and I have uh, colluded to put together those two words, <clears throat> um, you guys do go through a lot on these shows because we're kind of rough sometimes. Uh, but you know, we gotta be man. Cause we gotta wake each other up. We gotta be accountable to one another. And you know, and we do it in love. We really do. We do it in love. You guys who write to us at the uh, C2K report, you guys who take the classes and ask questions and, and say the most beautiful things to us. Like, you know, one lady, you know, in the first session of this class, <clears throat> she pipes up and she says she's she did a uh, a binge she binge watched every single c2k oh, yes, report I remember that yeah, yeah. And, and i thought to myself wow that's dedication because there are some there's a lot of hours there you know <clears throat> i mean we we've gone through periods where we were trying to break our record you know and uh uh, tonight, I think we did a pretty good job of getting close to it too. Um, but uh, uh, but you know uh, nothing's gonna beat the one from last night because <laughs> that was over two hours. Easy. Was it? Oh yeah, easy, easy over two hours. It didn't seem like it. But... That's because we were having fun. Right. Yeah, but you guys go check out that war room video. You're gonna love the war room video. Uh, it's something we're gonna do over and over again. I believe. I believe we're gonna. You know that's going to be a new series that we do. I don't know how often we'll do it, but we'll we're going to do it, and and it's going to get pretty deep because we wait till you hear the kind of stuff we talked about last night. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets pretty uh pretty dark um, in places, but but hope lots of hope because guess what guys, people are discovering that there's a way out. So, yep. with that said. Um, you know, as usual, before we get to the tagline to lead out, I'm going to ask my brother Randy if he would uh, lead us out. And don't don't forget to pray for our brothers in the Salt and Light Brigade. Right, right. Father, we thank you for another day to learn, another day to live, another day to serve you. And Father, forgive us of our sins because... Every day that you give us, we somewhere along the way fail you in that day. And you are so gracious and love us and forgive us and, and forgive the sins, Father, of not only uh, each of us individually, but the uh, nations that have sinned against you. We, have, we as a nation have sinned against you. Mm. Father, we're coming up on, on a time of the year that just sends shivers down my spine. Mm. And I just pray, Father, that, that you would... Um, especially, especially in these United States. He would forgive the sins of this nation. Mm -hmm. That the, uh, there would be no power for those um, dark and evil forces uh, to do the, the dark and evil deeds they love to do on the last day of this month. In the days leading up to that, even and we just, we just, uh, your word says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 
but they're mighty through God to the bringing down of strongholds. Whatever their stronghold, wherever they're going to perform their, their sacrifices and ceremonies, we just pray that they are brought down right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for the men of the Salt and Light Brigades that, that are trying to stand up for, for you and your word in this country, for freedom, for liberty, that you would protect them and, and you would uh, help them as they um, are learning about how to set up their house and be free and, and, and how to be a part of building this embassy. And we thank you for their, their courage and their willingness to take action. And, uh, Father, we thank you for the work that was done at Calvary. And forgive mm -hmm. us, Father, for not taking up uh, the work that was placed on us through Calvary to, to fulfill that which uh, the first Adam could not. And the second Adam made it possible for us to take that up so that uh, we can see your kingdom come and your will be done. Help us to understand your purpose, not our own purpose. What is uh, that? And we're called according to your purposes. And uh, Father, the days ahead, um, what man knows what they hold, but we know who holds tomorrow. So we we put our trust in you to hold our tomorrows. Um, Father, just be with the children, be with those who have been abused by this dark kingdom who have been hurt who have been broken um who have just been their their families destroyed their lives destroyed their minds destroyed their bodies destroyed by this dark kingdom but you are the great restorer mm. and you can restore uh everything from from their bodies, their minds, their souls, their spirits, their homes, uh, their towns, this nation, this world. You are the great restorer. And you make great promises of restoration. You've done the work of restoration. And you're just waiting on your saints to stand up and take their place who are called according to your purpose. Because all things can work together for the good of those who are called, uh, who love God and are called according to your purposes, not our own purposes, but to your purposes. May we seek your face, seek your will, to understand your purpose, to know who you are, because when we know our God, then the saints can do mighty exploits. Um, we trust you, we love you, we praise you. We pray that this broadcast gives glory to your name, brings honor to your kingdom, has done what you uh, had purposed it to do. Be with those who watch it, uh, that uh, they would receive from you what you have intended for them uh, for the time they invest in watching it. And we pray for the conference coming up. Your will be done. Perfect will be done uh, in, that, in that arena, in that venue. Uh, and that uh, truth would be spoken and, and uh, your light would shine and the darkness would be would just literally be eradicated from many, many people. We pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Guys, find your purpose and fulfill your purpose. And remember everything we do here at the C2K Report, it's always, always all about the blood.